Obsidian Canvas brings the flexibility of mind mapping tools to your Obsidian Vault, but it is so much more than just a simple mind mapping tool. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the amazing out-of-the-box features that Canvas provides, and then we'll look at some fun ways to use this tool for mind mapping and beyond. A canvas is a special type of note inside your Obsidian Vault, so we can't create it the way that we do normal notes. We have to go over to this ribbon on the side and we have this little button that has a bunch of boxes on it and that's the create new canvas button. So go ahead and click that and we get a brand new canvas inside of our vault. This is a infinite uh, canvas. It allows us to be able to put as many ideas, thoughts, and notes in any configuration that we want. There are a few different types of cards that we can add to a canvas. The first is just a normal card. You just drag that up from the bottom and this gives you a card to start with. So we're gonna have a central idea inside of our canvas. These cards are local to this canvas. They are not notes within your vault. They live on this canvas only. And you can resize them and drag them around as much as you want. And what's great about these is that they, even though they are not separate notes of their own, you can use all the different markdown that you can uh, in normal notes. So if I wanted to make this central idea larger, make it a header, I can add this hashtag and a space, and now I have an H1 header. So as I was mentioning, these cards are local to this canvas. What if you wanted to include some notes from your vault? So I'm just going to zoom out a little bit here. You can hold down the command button and scroll on Mac to zoom out. I think it's control on Windows. And then if I wanted to have a note from my vault, I drag this middle icon up and then it gives me the option to add in any note from my vault. So let's do my first note. So this is now a link to my actual note that exists. If I go up to the title and double click on it, it actually goes to that note. I'm gonna go back to the canvas. So this third type is a media card, so I'm gonna drag that up. And right now I've only got one image inside of this vault, so we're gonna add that. So I click on it, and then I have that image in my canvas to be able to use. So these are the three different types of cards that you're gonna be using inside of a canvas. Hey guys, future Brennan here. I completely forgot to tell you about a fourth kind of card that you can use inside of Canvas. You can embed web pages directly inside your canvas. Perhaps there's an article that you wanna reference inside of your mind map. Just copy the URL, right click anywhere in the canvas, and hit insert web page. You can also just select a URL and drag and drop. All right, let's get back to the video. Now, what can you do with these cards? Right now, they're just kind of floating around on this canvas. You can grab this little dot on the side of a card, and you can drag it over to another one, and that now makes a connection between these two cards. And I can move this card around, and that connection will be maintained. So let's go ahead and grab that. Now. I want this central idea to be in the center, so let's go ahead and move these things around. I can click on this connection, delete it, click on this one, delete it. I want this central idea to be in the center. So we're going to move that into the center, and then I'm going to drag these connections over. And now this is the central idea, and it branches out into these other two cards. You can do a, different, a couple different things with these connections, so let's go ahead and click on one again. You can obviously I can delete the connections and I can change the color of what they look like. So let's say I want this connection to be orange. I can do that. You can either use their presets or you can choose any color from this color spectrum. You can zoom into that selection. So you can actually do this with not only connections but with cards. So if I click on this and I click on that zoom, I can zoom in and focus on that particular item. So let's zoom back out here. Let's go back to this connection here. If you click on this arrow, you can change what the direction of this line is. So if I don't want an arrow, I click on the non-directional, and that just creates a, a line between them. Uh, if I go back in here, I can say unidirectional, so just going one direction, and that will be the direction from the one that you dragged it from. And then if I can have a bidirectional connection that will have an arrow on both ends. 
I then also can click this button and add a label to this connection. We'll just say first connection as a label for now. And then that label will stay with that connector. So let's say I have a bunch of cards. So let's go ahead and throw a bunch of cards on here. So here's one, here's a card, and then we'll grab another one. We'll say here's another card and third card. Yep. Very deep thoughts I'm thinking here right now. So I've got these notes here, and let's say that they relate to each other, and I kind of want them to stay together. You can group different cards together just by clicking outside of a card, clicking and dragging them. And then you've got a few options here. You can change the colors of them, you can delete them, zoom in on them, but then you can also create a group. So I'm gonna click on this, and now these are grouped together. Uh, card group. And so I can click this title and I can drag around and then all of these cards come with it. And I can create connections between cards and groups, or I can use this connection to go in and connect to any of these individually inside. What's also cool about groups is you can resize them. You can basically remove things from a group by resizing this, and these are now outside of that group. And then I can resize it again and include that. Maybe I wanted this one up here to be part of the group as well, so I can take this group and drag it in. And now this is part of the group as well. Another cool thing that you can do with groups, when I click on this, you can align things inside of them. So let's say I want everything aligned in the center of those groups. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about with groups, well, first you can change the label, you can zoom in, all those things. But you can also set a background image for a group. So if I hit set background, we're gonna use that same background. Now this background is on this Group. I'll show you a cool way that we can use this background image feature a little later in the video. So I keep talking about how amazing this tool is, and so far all I've shown you is you know the basics of a mind mapping tool that pretty much any any mind mapping tool can do this. So what is it that makes Obsidian so special? Well, one thing that I've already mentioned is the fact that I can connect notes from my vault, notes that I've already made. So Maybe I have uh, atomic notes, which is a concept of having a single idea inside of a note. Uh, maybe I have a bunch of those and I want to be able to use them in here. Now, it, it's different than backlinking, which makes a direct link between those notes and I can click on those links. These connections are local to this canvas and I can arrange those notes in a different way than maybe the backlinks are giving me. And I think that's the thing that really makes this tool better than any other is because it utilizes your existing vault of notes and knowledge and you can use them in a bunch of different ways, different connections that can be made in a canvas file than through the backlinks. In a lot of mind mapping tools, you have to connect different nodes. What's great about Obsidian Canvas is that you don't have to do that. I can have this free floating card out here and I don't have to make a connection. Maybe there's something that doesn't quite connect in with things. Maybe I just want to have this free floating card here. I can do that. I have that freedom and flexibility. So let's switch over to my personal vault and I will show you how I am using Canvas beyond just mind mapping. What you're looking at here is a dashboard that I have created for my YouTube channel to be able to track the ideas that I have and how I'm moving them through my production pipeline. So I have this pipeline group up at the top and this is showing me the status of the different videos that I have. So let's zoom in here and take a look at what these are. I've got a an ideas column. These are a bunch of notes that I have created with ideas for my YouTube channel. Now if you click on this and we click on it again, I can go in here and what I'm using is I'm actually using a community plugin called DataView that goes and grabs all of the notes that meet certain criteria. I will not be going over the DataView plugin in this, but the DataView plugin combined with Canvas is really powerful for creating kind of these dashboard setups. Now I've got different stages that my, that my ideas for YouTube go through. I've got things that are coming up. 
uh, ones that I'm working on this month, and then I have a list of all the ones that have been published. And so I can see them move through the pipeline. I've got another few things that I've got here. I've got some ideas for some community posts that I've got. This is an actual note, so if I wanted to drill down into this one, I could click it and see just that note. I also have my template for my YouTube videos here. So if I am in this dashboard and I have an idea of something that I want to add or take away from my YouTube template, I can just do it right here because it's linked. Any changes that I make to this note will happen in the actual template file itself. So if I say, I want this to be part of my template. So I'm gonna zoom, sorry, I'm a bit zoomed out. I want this to be part of my template. So I just added that here in this canvas. If I go up and I double click on this and open it up, this template now has that in it. Now I don't want that in there. So I'm gonna delete it and then I'm gonna go back to my canvas. As you can see, it's deleted. Another note that I've connected here, I'm keeping track of how many videos I have done. Another thing that I'm using Canvas for is I am keeping track of all of the notes, thoughts, ideas, documentation around the gamified task manager app that I'm building. Here is kind of more of a free for all as far as notes go. I just have all these different cards here. Um, I've got some images, uh, things that I'm working with, I've got a bunch of links to different resources that I've got here. These research ones, a lot of these are notes that I can link, and these are just cards that have backlinks in them, just like any other note would. And they live inside of this canvas. And you can see here I have created a group for this game design doc that I actually sketched out by hand. I created a group and I put that sketch as a background on this group. And then I was creating cards that help me to kind of continue to work with this image that you know is done, it's exported, it can't be changed, but then I have cards on top of it that allow me to add in additional information. So I've got this note about character customization. And so I link it to this note here on pixel art character style ideas. Here's another canvas that I have. It's kind of a mood board kind of idea. And I've got all these different pixel art characters that I'm thinking about how to design my character. So here's a bunch of examples of, of different characters. And then I've got some different notes that uh, you know expand on these notes that I've written out. I didn't have an idea of the story yet when I first wrote this this handwritten note so I've added that in as a card here and because it's a group I can grab this and move it around and all the cards stay in place. Going back over to our initial mind map let's actually take a look at one of these items here. How is Obsidian Canvas worse than other mind mapping tools? While it is amazing and there's so many amazing things about it there are some kind of maybe gotchas or you know things nitpicks things to consider here this is very finicky on mobile i use canvas on my phone on my ipad and it does some kind of weird things on ipad in particular uh, when you're been using it for a while when you've had obsidian open for a while i can no longer drag cards around you have to like hold it down really long and then sometimes that puts it into editing mode and sometimes that doesn't. I'd say another thing that makes this not the best mind mapping tool for me is that there's no way to add handwritten notes natively. So we had my my solution for that was, you know, taking notes of something and creating it as a background and then adding it in. But the problem is, is that I can't just create handwritten notes on the fly inside of Obsidian. I have to create this in a different program. Now this isn't gonna be a problem for everybody, but for me, I do a lot of drawing, a lot of handwriting. That's how I like to get ideas out initially. So not having a native way to add handwritten notes is something that makes this tool maybe a little bit less than for me. So there are a few things, but overall Canvas really is this amazing tool. There's nothing stopping me from amazing, making these cool dashboards. 
and having these projects or have all these different notes, thoughts, and ideas, and I can rearrange these however I want. It's really just an amazingly powerful tool, and I highly recommend giving it a try.